welcome everyone. Here we go. This is an easy one. We're focusing on our core. We're still on level one. We're doing core, athletic work and kickboxing. And so this one is focusing on your six pack. We're starting in plank position, pushing the hips backwards into downward facing dog and then rolling it forward into your plank position. So when you push back, simply go straight back. And then when you roll forward, round yourself as much as you can. So this is mobilizing the spine, engaging our core muscles. It works a little bit on your shoulder girdle. And it's also just fun. So I love this one. This is actually a great warm up for the whole body with a very low impact, but super efficient. So no big jumps high impact uh, today. This is like a ground work that you can include anytime you like if you want to get a little bit more core workout in. So let's start with shoulder rolling here to get the shoulders warmed up. Stretch those arms out to the side, palms are facing up. And then roll it backwards. That small circles at high speed. And we're gonna change sides. There's just one whistle here. So changing sides, rolling forward, or just the opposite direction that you have been doing. Keep those arms stretched out. Thumbs are facing up, thumbs are facing, facing backwards. Great one. High five. So shoulders are warmed up. And there we go. A little bit of a side stretch. We're not going to do our usual leg stretching here because we don't really need it. We're not going to do kicks and stuff. So just a simple side stretching. Arms and fists or just relax your fingers and hands. So cross one leg backwards and then lean sideways into the same direction and then change sides. Make sure you make sure you C-shape your body, especially your spine. You want to open the rib cage. You want to stretch the latissimus, big back muscle, and also release the neck here a little bit. You might want to move the head in different directions while you're stretching, just to figure out where it needs some letting go and i believe there's always some letting go to do when it comes to our necks so here we go getting finalized with our warm-up getting those legs juiced up stand with your feet hip with the park and then step backwards into a low lunge We'll be staying low impact here, so there's only one exercise where we're going to be jumping and this is going to be on the floor in plank position, spoiler alert. So if this just stepping back into lunge is too little for you, feel free to jump it or to pulse it and you know, you never know, you're feeling totally pumped and you're wondering what's happening with my high intensity interval training boot camp? What is going on? So of course you can adjust to your needs, but be careful. There's another variation of this coming right up. So you just stay in the same lunge, but this time we're pulsing three times. So this is still low impact. And here we go for 45 seconds. And again, if this is not enough for you, I invite you to do those three pulses with a little jump in between each of the pulses and maybe even traveling sideways. We've been doing that exercise in one of the previous sessions. Or, I don't know, you just want to do like a hop, jump in jack, clap your fingers and touch your big toe. <laughs> Whatever you want to do, really. But this is your base line. This is your base exercise, juicing up the legs, warming up the body so we can go down onto the ground next and really focus on our core. So there we go. Get your wrist straight, your wristbands, whatever is hurting you in your wrist. Sometimes you know what I'm talking about. Get it all out of the way and come into your elbow plank. Now your elbows are underneath your shoulders and your shoulders and hips are exactly at the same height. So no dipping with the hips, pulling the navel in. Now push those heels backwards and push the crown of the head forward. 
You're gazing down in between your hands so that nose is pointing towards the floor and not forward. Keep your nose down. And if this elbow plank is starting to get too boring, you can of course move forward and back, pushing slightly from your heels forward and then pushing back with your forearms. Just moving is... That's always an option if um, static exercises are not for you to, to add little movements. There's enough movement here. Come into side plank on your left hand. Right arm is in T position towards the sky and ceiling. Feet are one in front of the other and then wrap the arm around and touch the lower calf from below. And this is a plank wrap working on your oblique muscles, your side core muscles. And we do need those sides for stability, for the transfers, for stability of our spine and uh, for aesthetic reasons as well because they are the edges of your beautiful six pack. Without those, the six pack would just be having no ends. <laughs> so keep breathing, just one more in and then change side. I think you can just keep going here. However, if you need a break, you know what to do. You press pause, you wait 25 or 40 seconds and then you go for it again. So this time on your right hand, side plank, one foot in front of the other, left arm is up in T position, then wrap the arm around you and grab or touch the calf of the lower leg. So focus here on really turning, crunching your upper body and of course your hips are moving up as well and this is working your deltoids. I did turn away from you also to show you that the shoulder girdle is working quite hard here. So shoulders, deltoids are getting a good workout for this one. Now let's change side again. Again on your left arm, right arm is on top footed one in front of the other but we're on our elbows and this time we're not lifting our hips we're simply wrapping so this one is really focusing on the core trying to rotate to wrap to twist our core here you want to exhale when you wrap and you want to inhale when you extend again this will make it easier to engage the core pulling the navel in and to focus on the correct muscles Great one. So keep breathing. I know your shoulder might be starting to wear out, but push your elbow down into the ground. Bring the shoulder away from your ear. And that's just one more. Saved by the whistle. Chase side. Turn around onto the right elbow. Forearm is on the ground, palm is flat on the ground. Then put one foot in front of the other. And here we go, wrapping. Left arm is wrapping around the body. So this time the shoulder is mostly stabilizing and the work is really done by your side belly muscles. And you will feel them by now. We have one more exercise to go and then we're having a little stretch, then we do a little bit more and then we're done. So this is not endless, I told you this is a small but very efficient core workout. You can just add this to your workout whenever you want. Keep pulling through. That's one more. Okay. So last one before we do a little bit of stretching. It's called the plank step. So we're stepping from the plank to the outside of the hand, one foot at a time. So come from your plank into low lunge on the right, then back into plank, low lunge on the left. And that's it. Easy. Of course, if you're feeling like it, I'm repeating myself, you could jump this or adding a little bit more spring, but you don't have to. I'd rather have you focus on your plank and not sagging in the hips too much to protect the back. So if you really focus on pulling the navel in, zipping those hip points, you know, tight pants moving up, protecting the back, and narrowing your waistline. This is enough core workout, you don't need to jump. 
then a deep breath out. We're having a little interlude here, stretching. And this is to stretch, but also to rest our wrists and shoulders a little bit. So you can stretch your right leg out and bend your left knee. We've been doing this in our kickboxing workout the previous day. So maybe that was yesterday for you or last week. And so you know the drill. And this time, since this is a core workout, I would really like you to focus on opening the rib cage and getting space between your hip and the rib cage. So you don't need to hamstring stretch here too much. Simply use this to open up the rib cage when you lean over side bend or back bend. Inhaling while you're really extending that whole side line, that front line. Stretching your core, stretching your six pack, getting more space in between your ribs. So do this on the inhale and also a little bit of a release of course for the legs so they haven't been working that much today. Usually they're working a lot. Today it's mostly upper body, shoulders, core. Then exhale when you stretch over your straight leg and inhale when you open to the side and backwards. Let's change sides. And when you change side, I would like you to focus on your sitting bones. So really ground your sitting bones into the ground, floor or carpet or whatever you're using. Maybe you're outdoors. And now stretch over your left leg, having your right knee bend. Really try to open those hips here. Right leg is rotating outwards. Then exhale when you stretch over the straight leg, stretching the hamstrings, pulling the sitting bones back, pushing the heel forward. You want to keep your foot flex. That's pulling the toes towards you. And then stretch and open, lifting, bringing light and air in between your ribs, really creating that nice freedom between your rib cage and your hips. Because we don't just want to become toned and that might make us small or a little bit more inflexible and immobile, you know, uh, less rotation happening, less range of motion. I would like you to become all of it, strong, toned, pumped up, but also highly flexible or simply flexible, having great range of motion, not being restricted in your body. And that really is a goal that we're having here in this high intensity interval training, not just to burn calories, get this afterburner, do lots of athletic and functional training, but also do it in a smart way to use the heat that we're creating and this fluid and space in our muscles, fascia, tendons, ligaments, to actually create more space and freedom. And you'll love it. Um, we're not even halfway through, but I believe you're already having quite some results. All right, so I promise this was just an interlude and also promise we're gonna have some high impact. So. Get the engine back up running, come into plank position, and this time we're jumping from one side low lunge position into another one, another one, and another one. It's three jumps, and then opening into T to the side. So jump three times, one, two, three, open the outer hand towards the bent knee into T position, and jump, 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 and lift it. This is actually easier than you think. The secret is to get the hips up so you can actually move those legs underneath your body. So hips up, change legs, one, two, three, open up, rotate and lower down. Come on, you can do two more. I would say in five seconds, we can do one last time. Be strong in your shoulders. Okay, that was the last one. So here we go, last 
strength exercises. One right, one left. We're starting with the right side. Come into down dog position. You find your perfect down dog position when you start in a plank and then simply push your hips up to the sky or ceiling. Then bring the right knee in and push it all the way up into down dog split. Simply the right leg. No changing, no alternating. We're just doing the right side first and then we're going to continue with the left one. So right knee to the front as much as you can. Try to bring the knee underneath the shoulder girdle, almost touching your elbows maybe. If you're into that, you can of course touch your triceps on either side. I don't mind. You can do a little bit of rotation here. So triceps on the right or triceps on the left can be your target for your kneecap. It's a little bit of glute work combined with great core work. So change sides or have a little pause for your wrists and shoulders and then pull the left knee towards your triceps or just underneath your shoulders and then lift into a down dog split that's pulling the left leg up as high as you can working your left buttocks your left glute and this is also our last exercise so please enjoy it get as much core workout in here as you can so you might really want to crunch it forward. Remember, your left or right triceps can be your target. Just touch it slightly with your kneecap. That's a great way to bring a little bit of playfulness into this down dog knee. And there you are. That's it. We're stretching and uh, kissing the ground. <laughs> Now we're just lying on the belly, opening the arms in T positions. And here are a few variations to release our ab tone or ab uh, contractions. So this is one, a great back stretch, but also two, a great abdomen stretch. So arms go out to the side and then bend the right knee, move the foot over to the left side lifting the right hip a little while you're turning the upper body and then change side. First bending the left knee and then moving it over to the right side. Make sure you breathe into your belly, lowering your breathing rhythm a little bit. Make sure your shoulders are more or less on the ground to really focus the rotation in your hips and open and create space in your abdomen. Now, if you feel like uh, doing a little bit of a variation here, you can open the arms from that T position into a V and then just do the same thing with the legs. So that's bending the right knee 90 degrees and flipping it over and rotating the right leg onto the left. You can see a nice stretch here in the belly, opening creating space between the rib cage and the hips and let's do that on the other side make sure you release your head it's a good way to get comfortable with lying on the ground getting your head into the grass if you're working out on grass so bending the left knee rotating it over flipping it over onto the right side arms still stay in V position this time your left shoulder might come up a little higher. And there's yet another variation that you might or might not want to do. So we're coming into white cobra. So that's cobra on the fingertips with the hands outside of your shoulders, elbows wide. Legs do the same thing. Right knee bends, then flipping over onto the left side. But you do come up a little bit into a cobra, but twist it. Twist a cobra, looking over the right shoulder. All right, let's try that on the other side if you like it. Otherwise, you can just remain with one of the two previous variations. So bending the left leg, flipping it over onto the right, coming onto the fingertips, elbows wide, and then opening, lifting the chest. I love this one. It looks super complicated, but it's actually very easy and intuitive once you're there. little surprise here if you want to you don't have to but here's your extra bonus 
for your six pack. So come into elbow plank and this is an easy one, I promise. You're pretty relaxed now, you're pretty, um, I think, recovered from our core work. So let's have a little hip dip to both sides. And this is as much toning as a stretch because we're opening the sides here as well while we're toning our abdomen. And I like to keep this a little bit bouncy because it's simply more fun. So stay with the elbows underneath the shoulders. Nice elbow plank and then dip it left and dip it right. And before you know it, this is all over. So keep breathing. We'll be stretching again in a second. There you are. So variation of the hamstring stretch. I call this the hurdle stretch because we're having both knees bent. So both knees bend over to the left side. We're opening the arm and come up onto the right. And then both knees come onto the right. You're opening the left arm all the way up. This allows you to open your hip flexors a little bit more. They're usually tight when people, when we, when we sit too much in cars, at work, at the dinner table, in front of the TV. So pushing the hips forward, really engaging the glutes, helps the hips to reopen again. And that's why I'm including all these really nice and corrective stretches here to make you feel good all over. Chest stretching, focusing on the arms here because we've been doing a lot of plank positions. So the simple chest stretch is just opening the arms to the sides, palms are facing up, thumbs backwards. Now don't let go too much of your hips and your shoulder girdle, keep your navel tucked in and then pull those shoulder blades together. You wanna to pull those thumbs backwards. If you feel like it, you can include head stretches, neck stretches. You can even roll the shoulders backwards and down or interlace the fingers behind the back, pulling those arms a little higher without sagging. Keep the chest up, keep the chin up, keep the gaze up. Stand proud and tall. You've done this amazing core workout. I hope you'll be back soon and see all those amazing benefits for your core and six pack. Bicep stretch, easy one. We're pressing the right hand forward, creating little resistance with the left hand, engaging the triceps, this releases our biceps. If you don't feel anything, don't worry, then your biceps is not shortened. And then it's simply a nice mobilization, but not a stretch, but still keep doing it. And then change side, we're pushing, pushing the left hand forward, creating resistance with the right hand, flat palm pushing forward, contracting the triceps a little bit to release our biceps. Make sure your shoulders stay down, always release the neck and tell those trapezius muscles to let go. Tricep stretch. These are usually pretty tight, so take it easy. Place your right hand in between your shoulder blades. Then simply grab the shoulder with the left hand. You can push a little. That's pulling the elbow closer to the head, if that's easy for you, or pushing the hand a little bit lower down in between the shoulder blades. If you're a fan of it, you can grab from below but without dislocating your left shoulder, please. <laughs> Other option is to bend sideways, pushing the elbow up and creating this nice curve here, which is also creating more space between the rib cage and the hips. So we're stretching again, our side body, then change side, left hand, is it left? It is left in between your shoulder blades, grabbing your left elbow with the right hand, helping a little so the hand and elbow doesn't slip, pulling the elbow a little bit closer to the head and then slipping and sliding the hand in between the shoulder blades a little bit lower, as much as feels comfortable for you. And if you do wanna grab from below, do it, else I have this other option for you to lean sideways opening that whole side line here. 
That's a great stretch. You should try it. You might even cross the same side leg behind. Getting deeper into your side hip here. Medial glutes. And let's finish this up with a side stretch. Start with your feet parallel, then cross the right leg behind, push the right hand over your head to the sides. Include your head into the movement. Head is always in line with the spine, so if the spine is moving in a C-shape, your head just continues the curve. You can either make fists in uh, if you are like a kickboxing fan and this helps you for directing your arms, feel free, otherwise you can just let go of your hands and C-shape, opening those six packs and core muscles that we've been working on long. Come back here anytime you like, this is here for you. Otherwise, I'll see you all next time for level two. We're starting again with aesthetic work. See you there.